Um, hello, and welcome to this first WebEx posting. Uh, this is a posting that is due Friday, February 7th of uh, 2014. This is the first WebEx posting for uh, Senior Design 2 for the spring of 2014 semester. Uh, this is for the uh, Temple University NASA Lunabotics 2014 electrical team. Uh, and as I said, this is our first WebEx post, uh, posting for the spring of 2014 semester. My name is Mark Halberstadt, uh, and uh, my teammates are Eric Schisselbauer and John Morris, and our advisor is Dr. John Helferty in the uh, ECE department at Temple University. So what I want to do in this presentation is I want to uh, go over what our team goals are uh, for the project. Uh, I want to go over what the overall progress is that we've had, and mainly I'm going to be highlighting much progress that we made over the uh, winter break period, and then I'm going to talk about the next steps for the project. So our goals as a team, uh, our first goal, our primary goal is to design and build power control and communication systems capable of driving a mining vehicle through a harsh lunar environment. Uh, this is part of uh, the main goal for the NASA Lunar Box competition in which we will be participating in May of 2014. Um, and hopefully what, I, what I'm hopefully going to demonstrate in uh, this presentation is that we are uh, a good way um, uh, completed with uh, 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 this first goal. Uh, we still have to, I guess, uh, finalize many things in this, but hopefully what I'll show in this presentation is that uh, this first goal, uh, we are really a good way uh, done with, uh, with accomplishment of this first goal. We are able to manually control uh, the uh, first um, uh, prototype uh, provided to us by the mechanical team that we are working in conjunction with, uh, and we are also able to power our uh, we are able to power and control our testing platform. So uh, anyway, that is our first goal. Our second goal is to achieve complete autonomous functionality of the mining vehicle, and this second goal is really where we are going to be concentrating our efforts in this second semester of senior design, trying to achieve full autonomous uh, full full autonomous functionality. And then our third goal as a team is to produce a very uh, power efficient system uh, and hopefully be able to reduce the size of the battery. Um, so anyway, uh, let me move through into our overall progress. Uh, much of the progress that we have made since our last uh, posting was uh, done over the winter break period at Temple. Uh, we really did work uh, uh, through the winter break, uh, we, and we were able to get uh, a good amount of uh, progress made. So uh, the first bit of progress, we were able to implement a Java TCP IP uh, network uh, that we were, we were able to get to work uh, pretty well. Unfortunately, the, in the Java network that we did implement, there was a bit of lag in that uh, network, and uh, the, much of this uh, network infrastructure is now being rewritten in Python. But we were able to uh, implement this in Java, and we were, it was able to uh, help us accomplish uh, the manual control, uh, uh, the wireless manual control uh, for our testing platform. And that moves me on to the second thing that we accomplished. We accomplished wireless manual control of our autonomous lawnmower testing platform. I'll show a, a video demonstration of that in a second. Uh, we were able to accomplish also manual control of the mechanical prototype, the first prototype that our mechanical team produced. We were able to achieve this with both wired and wireless uh, connections. Uh, the video I'm going to show you actually shows a wired, essentially a, uh, a tethered um, connection. We are doing this mainly because uh, while we were able to implement this uh, via wireless connection, there was quite a bit of lag in our network. And for our first test, it was deemed that the amount of lag that we had was really unacceptable for the mechanical testing that needed to be done for that test. But I'll, I'll show you a, a video of that in uh, just a second. Uh, we were also able to implement a particle filter system for detection of our infrared beacon. I'm also going to show you a video of, uh, of uh, this system working, where basically uh, our particle filter is able to uh, filter out the signal from our infrared beacon, which we are going to place on the robot. And uh, this particle filter is able to 
um, uh, differentiate between the beacon on air robot and sources of DC interference. Uh, and I'll show you a video demonstrating that. And then also we were able to implement and test a power measurement system. I am not going to be showing you a video of this in this presentation, but a video of this working is available on uh, our project website. Uh, so anyway, let me move on and I want to show you a few video demonstrations. So I'm going to start out, oh, and they have closed on me. Just open back up again. So uh, I want to show you <clears throat> a few uh, video demonstrations of uh, manual control working for our system. So this is our autonomous lawnmower system, and I'm going to just fast forward to the point where I can show manual control of this robot actually moving around. So, okay, this is a video demonstration where I am controlling this robot with a joystick, and we can see that this robot is moving forward and is also going to be able to uh, move backward. Uh, and this is a wireless connection between uh, between a, uh, a command center PC, uh, which is accepting input from the joystick, and uh, information is being sent via Wi-Fi to uh, our autonomous uh, lawnmower testing platform. So that is the first video that pretty much shows that we do have a uh, wireless control system for manual control working. The second video I want to show is of our first test of our mechanical uh, uh, of our mechanical team's uh, prototype. So to start out, let me actually scrub forward. We were having a, uh, some problems with uh, getting the prototype to move in, uh, in uh, the uh, soil. So this is demonstration of a tethered, you can see the wire here coming out of the back of the, uh, back of the robot, a uh, tethered uh, wired control uh, using a joystick of, uh, of this robot. Uh, mainly, uh, the reason we did it uh, tethered for this is this was mainly a test of the mechanical systems. And with this test, we did realize that um, uh, currently this prototype is a two-wheel drive system. Only these back two wheels on either side are being powered and the front two wheels are idling. Uh, based on the results of this testing, we realized that we do have to go to a four-wheel drive system. So that is the main focus of our mechanical team uh, at present. Uh, the last video demonstration that I want to show is of our infrared particle filter uh, working. So this particle filter, essentially the way it works is the particle filter is controlling the infrared beacon on the robot. When the beacon, and essentially the particle filter is telling the beacon to turn on on the robot and receiving an acknowledgement back that the beacon is on, uh, the particle filter then samples from our Wiimote IR sensors and uh, then the particle filter tells the beacon on the robot to turn off. Uh, so based on this, we know essentially the particle filter knows when the beacon is on and when the beacon is off. And in this demonstration, uh, what you are going to see is essentially we've got um, uh, the particles are represented by both red dots and green dots here. Red dots are uh, particles that will be uh, respawned in the next iteration of the filter. Green dots are, uh, are particles that will, uh, I guess, essentially survive the next iteration of the filter. So in this example, as you can see, I move the infrared beacon into the frame, into the view of the camera, and the particle filter is able to lock onto it uh, very quickly. The dot in the center is the average value of each of these particles, and that is going to be what is output as, um, uh, as the uh, location of the infrared beacon. You can see that there's a little bit of lag here, but we are actually oscillating this beacon uh, about five times slower than we hope to do in our final product. So that should improve the situation with the lag. You can see that there's a lag behind the particle filter and where the beacon actually is. We hope to be able to improve that through faster sampling. You can also see here that we are able to indicate uh, that our beacon is found. In addition to this, we are also able to output, and this is not in this version of the GUI that this uh, video is showing, we are able to output 
essentially a confidence measurement uh, between zero and one of how confident we are in this approximation. Uh, so currently the beacon is not in the frame and it says beacon not found. Uh, essentially we are able to do this based on the standard deviation of the particles. As the standard deviation goes down, our confidence that, uh, that uh, this average value for our particle filter is correct uh, goes up. Uh, so we are going to be able to integrate that uh, confidence measurement into our autonomous system. Uh, let me also show you, this is a, uh, a uh, version of the uh, particle filter where you can see that we are tracking our beacon. Our beacon is oscillating and uh, we are tracking it and the particle filter is very good at ignoring this source of DC interference that we have. So uh, I guess that is pretty much it for the particle filter and that was really our goal for the particle filter. We had problems in the past with our uh, Wiimote system um, uh, being susceptible to inter IR interference from sunlight. Uh, we are anticipating that the sun is going to be a source of DC interference, so this particle filter is very good at rejecting um, DC interference. Uh, so anyway, uh, I guess that's it for the video demonstrations. Uh, what I want to uh, move on to is just talk about what the next steps are for the project. So uh, for the project, the next step for the power system is uh, to integrate our current measurement system into both our testing platform and our first mechanical prototype because we do have to start looking at uh, the possibility of shrinking our battery system and in order to do that we do have to take a strong look at uh, the amount of power that we're going to be consuming. For our communication system, we are uh, optimizing and really we are actually rewriting most of our TCP IP client and server programs in Python as opposed to Java. We are hopeful uh, and we have actually done some preliminary testing and, and seen that uh, that is going to speed up the manual control uh, response time. So hopefully, well, and, and we, are, we are sure that in the next test that we run, that we will not, it will not be a tethered test, it will be a wireless test. For the control system and autonomous function system, we are going to integrate the particle filter uh, that I, I just showed you a demonstration of uh, into our Wiimote sensor array. Currently we have tested the particle filter, the particle filter system with a single uh, Wiimote sensor. We hope to be able to test that uh, uh, with the full array of sensors. So uh, next I want to kind of break this down into a schedule of when this will all happen. By February 12th, we hope to be able to integrate the power measurement system into uh, the testing platform. Uh, and also uh, we are hopefully going to build it in such a fashion that it will be easy to implement, uh, in, implement and integrate into the mechanical prototype and the final mechanical product. Um, we are also going to be integrating in the obstacle detection system uh, into the testing platform. So that uh, we are saying a goal of February 12th, that is uh, Wednesday of next week. Uh, by uh, 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 two weeks from today, by Friday, February uh, 21st, uh, we are saying a goal for the completion of the Wiimote sensor array uh, hardware. Once that hardware is complete, by February 28th, we hope to have completed our first autonomous system uh, test with the uh, testing platform. And February 28th uh, really marks the beginning of spring break. The February 28th is a Friday. Uh, the following week uh, is spring break. We are again, just as we did over winter break, we are planning on working continuously through uh, spring break. And spring break ends on March 9th. By the end of March 9th, uh, we hope to uh, complete uh, manual control testing on the final mechanical system and we also uh, hope to have completed uh, integration of the autonomous system into the final mechanical system and to have begun uh, testing of the autonomous system on the, on, the, uh, on the final mechanical system. The mechanical team has set a due date of uh, having completed construction on their final mechanical system by the beginning of spring break. So officially, according to the Temple calendar, spring, breaks, uh, spring break starts on March 2nd. Uh, on the electrical team, we are recognizing the start of spring break as being February 28th, which is essentially the, the Friday uh, before spring break starts. 
Um, so anyway, that is the breakdown of what we have accomplished so far and kind of our schedules of where we are going. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, you can uh, refer to our team's website, or you can contact myself directly at c.mark.halberstadt at temple.edu. Uh, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in a future video. Thanks.